so good afternoon dear students uh, today we are going to start the text of the third level yesterday i just summed up the theme of this lesson today i am going to uh, sum up uh, not sum up exactly i am going to uh, you know, explain the text of this lesson right so we have already come to know what is this lesson all about it's a psychological novel it's a science fiction uh, so time travel is about time travel okay and third level is nothing but uh, a fictional uh, you can say the underground okay uh, railway underground uh, or you can say the subway okay uh, in the grand central uh, station right uh, so today we are going to you know, study the text okay dear students so let's begin uh, here you can see uh, have you ever had any curious experience which others find hard to believe the presidents of the new york central and the new york the new haven and hartford railroads to swear on a stack of timetables that there are only two. Okay, so here in reality there are only two. Uh, you can say the platforms. Okay, uh, two stair platform. Okay, uh, but in the vision of Charlie, there are three levels. Okay, but I say there are three. The narrator says that he i say there are three because i have been on the third level of the grand central station right so he's saying he i have been on the third level of the grand central station yes i have taken the obvious step i talked to a psychiatrist friend of mine i talked to a psychiatrist friend of mine among others i told him about the third level at grand central station and he said it was a waking dream wish fulfillment. Okay. I told him about the third level at Grand Central Station, and he said it was a waking dream wish fulfillment. Okay. So it seems the narrator has consulted his psychiatrist friend, uh, that is Sam, okay, about his experience of third level in Grand Central Station. And his friend did not agree uh, with him, saying that it was just a waking dream wish fulfillment. Okay, so waking dream wish fulfillment. What does it mean? It means uh, what is this? Uh, you see, okay, it is waking dream fulfillment. Okay, waking dream you must be knowing the dream that we can see by waking up daydream what we call daydream so uh, his friend psychiatrist friend sam said that it was just a waking dream wish fulfillment he said i was unhappy right uh, that is why might be there is a tendency for the narrator to go back to the past and in the process of going back to the past, he has made a, another fictional a level that is called the third level, right? That made my wife kind of mad, but he explained that he meant the modern world is full of insecurity, fear, modern world is full of insecurity, fear, worry, and all the rest of it. And that I just want to escape. Okay, so his psychiatrist friend, uh, that is Sam, informed him that this modern world, as it is full of insecurity, fear, war, worry, that is why uh, Charlie wanted to go back to the past. And it's a method of escaping from the past, okay? It's a matter of escaping from the past. Well, who doesn't? Everybody I knew wants to escape, but they don't wonder 
down into any third level at Grand Central Station. The letter says, yes, everybody wants to escape, but their manner of escapism is not the same as my manner of escapism, right? Uh, I know wants to escape, but they don't wander down to any third level. But that's the reason, he said, and my friends all agreed. Uh, that's the reason. What is the reason? The reason is the fact that the narrator wanted to escape from the worry and insecurity of the modern day world. That is why he wanted to avoid it. So in order to avoid it, he uh, took psychological refuge in the past. Okay, And in the process of thinking about the Grand Central Station, he had Made, made his own uh, level of the station that is the third level right but that is the reason of it uh, everything points to it they claimed my stamp collecting for example that's a temporary refuse from reality well refuse means temporary shelter from the reality stamp collection is also one of the uh, devices by which uh, the narrator went back to the past well, maybe, but my grandfather didn't need any refuse from reality. Things were pretty nice and peaceful. Pretty nice and peaceful in his day. From all I hear, and he started my collection. It's a nice collection too. Blocks of four of practically every US issue. First day covers and so on. Okay, so first day covers means whenever a particular stamp is released okay that particular day is called first day cover okay the uh, stamp that is purchased on the very first day that is what is called the first day cover right and um, uh, a, a, as i told you like here uh, you can see and here again let me tell you um, stamp collection. Stamp collection uh, is a sort of a old day activity, right? Uh, old day activity. So that is why uh, the very practice of stamp collecting on the part of the narrator is also uh, a pointer to the fact that he wanted to escape from the uh, reality of the present day world. And refuse means the state of being safe or sheltered. Uh, from pursuit, right? That is refuse. Okay. Uh, now, uh, his grandfather must have not been insecure because in the days of his grandfather, it was very very secure. There was no worry, no no tension, right? So th that is why uh, they those days were very peaceful. That is why Charlie wanted to go back to the past because the past days were very peaceful very secure and his grandfather also was in the habit of stamp collection because in those days uh, people could have time enough to uh, you know uh, plenty of time you can say to pursue hobby of their interest right uh, the collection moreover was amazing with blocks of four of practically every u.s issue even President Roosevelt collected stamps. Okay, so stamp collection was one of the very great uh, hobbies of those days. You know. Okay, so next you see what is said. Anyway, here is what happened at Grand Central. One night last summer, I worked late at the office. I was in a hurry to get uptown to my apartment, so I decided to take the subway from grand central because it's faster than the bus now i don't know why this should have happened to me i am just an ordinary guy named charlie okay he said i am just an ordinary guy named charlie 31 years old and i was wearing a tan garmentine suit and a straw hat with a fancy band okay you can see here okay uh, I passed a dozen men who looked just like me, right? I passed a dozen men who looked just like me and I wasn't trying to escape from anything. Okay. 
okay he was not trying to escape from anything i just wanted to get home to luisa his wife actually okay in the name of his wife is luisa so as he got late in his work he was he wanted to uh, get home uh, return home uh, very fast therefore he took the grand central subway understood because otherwise he would be held up in the traffic and he might get late in the process of reaching his home therefore he turned into grand central from vanderbilt avenue and went down the steps to the first level where you take trains like the 20th century understood where you take trains like the 20th century okay why is it in 20th century because uh, in his psychological journey okay in his mind struggle what happens he has gone back to the past right so he will also be experiencing in his mind the the old day trains right but he said when i turned into grand central from vanderbilt avenue and went down the steps to the first level okay Uh, where of course you you can happen to see the modern day train. Then I walked down another flight. Then he again went down further down to the second level. Second level means you can say second floor, but it's underground floors actually. Okay, second floor where the sub R1 trains leave from, duck into an arched doorway heading for the subway and got lost. And this is how when he went to the second level, okay, he again. Went further, he got lost. That's easy to do. I have been in and out of Grand Central hundreds of times, but I am always bumping into new doorways and stairs and corridors. Okay, because if you do not know uh, the uh, uh, the exact shortcut route, in that case, what will happen? You will get confused and you will get uh, lost somewhere or the other. Okay, so that is why uh, he. he is always bumping into new doorways and stairs and corridors once i got into a tunnel about a mile long and came out in the lobby of the roosevelt roosevelt hotel another time i came up in an office building on 46th street three blocks away okay three blocks away sometimes i think grand central is growing like a tree sometimes i think grand central is growing like a tree okay so grand uh, sometimes the narrator thinks that grand central is growing like a tree pushing out new corridors and staircases like roots okay uh, because grand central is expanding it's a uh, it's a uh, you know you can say very big railway station so it's expanding so the writer thinks that is something uh, like a tree pushing out new corridors and staircases like roots there is probably a long tunnel that nobody knows about filling its way under the city right now on its way to times square and maybe another to central park and maybe because for so many people through the years grand central has been an exit a way of escape maybe that is how the tunnel i got into but i never told my psychiatrist friend about that idea okay so might be as and when he went into the tunnel he got into that psychological state of journey okay the corridor i was in began angling left and slanting downwards and i thought that was wrong but i kept on walking all i could hear was the empty sound of my own footsteps and i didn't pass a soul it means when he went inside the tunnel that is when his psychological travel started there was nobody inside the tunnel and this is how he went back to the past okay he started uh, thinking imagining about the past you can see here the tunnel turned sharp left see then i heard that, that sort of hollow roar and that means open space and people talking the tunnel turned sharp left i went down a short flight of stairs and came out on the third level at grand central station okay he says how he came down into another level down downstairs okay and this is how he said he 
uh, reached on the third level. For just a moment, I thought I was back on the second level, but I saw the room was smaller. There were fewer ticket windows and train gates and the information booth in the center was wood and old looking. And the man in the booth wore a green eye shade and long black sleeve protectors. The lights were dim and sort of flickering. Then I saw why they were open flame gas lights. So, our dear students, as you can see here, like he has, like he has already gone into the third level in his mind's eye, okay, in his travel, psychologically he has gone, uh, but actually there was no third level, okay, he was, it is all his imagination, imagination, he might have bumped into a tunnel and then he started uh, imagining about this, okay, there was, uh, he, he, he thought that he, uh, he had, uh, reached to a third level where he could see all the old fashioned people and uh, a ticket how room everything is uh, similar to the old uh, old day a old day you know station and old day ticket counter right so it is yes his psychological journey has already started okay so then you can see here um as you can see, uh, like for like for example, uh, you can see here there were brass spittoons on the floor and across the station, uh, a glint of light caught my eye. A man was pulling a gold watch from his vest pocket. Uh, now, all these are fictional, dear students. These are all fictional description. Okay, so you should not take them for uh, take them to be true because Charlie had some idea about the life of 1890s. Okay, so he is trying to correlate this life with the present day life. Okay, because as I told you, he has he wanted to avoid the stress and anxiety of the present day world that is why he is into that uh, into the past into 1890s he must have heard about the lifestyle the people the trains uh, the stations of the 1890s so he has started imagining in this fashion right so all these are fictional uh, then i'll tell you uh, you can also see um, on the Google image, the meaning of spittoons and all that. Across the station, a glint of light caught my eye. A man was pulling a gold watch from his vest pocket. He snapped open the cover, glanced at his watch and frowned. He owed a derby hat. Derby hat also you can see, like, for example, dear students, you want to... Uh, let me show you how, how you can do that, okay? Uh, so, for example, you... Uh, Would like to see what does a derby hat look like so you can see like this see you can see in in this fashion see this is derby hat okay derby hat and uh, you'd like to see the meaning of spittoon so you can see here spittoon okay This is brass between and all, okay. So you can see here, uh, there were brass pitons on the floor across the station. Okay, he wore a derby hat, a black four button suit with tiny lapels, and he had a big black handle bar mustache. Okay, so so you would like to know what is handlebar mustache that also you can see here. See, I show you here. Handle, handle. Uh, what is this? Let me see once. Uh, handle bar mustache. 
see here this is handle handlebar mustache you see right Shamikar, Gandhi, all they have uh, put on such handlebar. This is called handlebar mustache. Okay, this is the example of handlebar mustache, as you can see here. This is the example of handlebar mustache. Okay, so the students, uh, you can see here, uh, and he had a big black handlebar mustache. Then I looked around and saw that everyone in the station was dressed like 1890 something. 1890 something okay i never saw so many beards sideburns fancy mustaches in my life sideburns okay see dear students what is the meaning of sideburns it's a sort of a mustache only okay see sideburns this is what is sideburns all about okay see this is also sideburns this is sideburns Uh, then you see fancy mustache. A woman walked in through the train gate. She wore a dress with leg of mutton sleeves uh, and scars to the top of her high button shoes, back of her out on the tracks. I caught a glimpse of a locomotive, a very small career and eaves locomotive with a funnel shaped stack. And then I knew. So see how does a locomotive look like. Okay, like this. All old. This is locomotive, old actually, 1890s, right? Like railway engine. Nowadays, so it's all modern, but that is what used to look like in 1980s. Okay, 1890s. So then you see to make sure I walk over to a new. A newsboy and glanced at the stack of papers at his feet. It was the world, and the world hasn't been published for years. The lead, the lead story said something about President Cleveland. I found that from page since in the public library files, and I uh, it was printed June 11, 1894. I turned towards the ticket window, knowing that here on the third level at Grand Central, I could buy tickets that would take Louisa and me anywhere in the United States who wanted to go in the year 1894 and I wanted two tickets to Galesburg, Illinois. Have you ever been there? It's a wonderful town still with the big old frame houses, huge lawns, tremendous trees whose branches meet overhead and roof of the streets. And in 1894, summer evenings were twice as long and people set out on their lawns. The man smoking cigars and talking quietly, the women waving palm leaf fans with the fireflies all around in a peaceful world. To be back there with the First World War, still 20 years off, and World War II over 40 years in the future, uh, I wanted two tickets for that, for uh, Galesburg. He wanted to go to Galesburg. And here in this page, the, on this entire page, he has described about the third level a railway counter, railway station, how did it look like, people, newspaper, uh, their habits like moustache and their, where they used to wear uh, the dress and all that. He has, he has described here and then here in the last paragraph he has described about the Gales Park, okay, uh, which is very wonderful uh, town uh, according to the narrator and uh, all the archaic uh, or the old day things can be seen like you use lawns are there, uh, tremendous trees or old uh, frame houses, right? Uh, uh, because in those days there was no constraint of space, but nowadays there is constraint of space, right? You don't get uh, plenty of space, so you have to live in a very confined space actually. Right in a very confined space you have to live. So that is why uh, in those days, if you watch the movie of the 1950s or 1960s, you, 
you, you it seems so good like uh, they used to spend time on nature in the lap of nature and their house was so big and all that so you enjoy you, you see a movie of 1950s 60s so you'll be able to have uh, sort of a you can be able to uh, sort of uh, relate uh, what was li uh, life uh, like uh, in the 90s in the 80s okay so anyway dear students uh, now we shall wind up for the day okay so we shall continue our in the text tomorrow okay so i shall try to finish in another two days okay so uh, and then you can see here uh, he um, he has described here different things of the past actually okay now he his psychological travel has started so he has started he has gone back to the past and he's describing about the grand central third floor okay uh, third level which he has experienced in his uh, mind and then uh, another place uh, he said that uh, he wanted to go to Gales Park so he has purchased a ticket for him and his wife uh, because it's a wonderful uh, town uh, in old days so it was very famous so he wanted to go there okay uh, it was a wonderful town with a lot of greenery and then he said uh, he could buy tickets that would take it them he was well aware that from here he could buy tickets and that could take him anywhere to the United States. And then he describes how things were in 1984 before the two world wars took place. Okay. Um, evenings were twice as long as they were now. Men and women living in peace and serenity. So he has a tendency to go back to the past and now he will describe us everything about the past so that we enjoy along with him this pictorial description right so we shall come to know about uh, the past things uh, and what used to happen in those days okay uh, in our next class right dear students so um, we shall wind up here um, today Okay, I think in another two days I'll be able to finish uh, this lesson. Okay, it appears to be a bit uh, boring, uh, dear students, but uh, you have to enjoy it uh, in terms of uh, seeing the in terms of the things that existed in the past. Okay, so uh, as I as I suggested, you you shall be able to enjoy it once you uh, go once you watch the film of the past. Okay. Uh, you can find on uh, YouTube, you can see the film of the past. Okay, like for example, you see Invisible Man, um, then you can see there are so many like Pride and Prejudice. You see the film Pride and Prejudice, uh, you can see the Merchant of Venice. All these things, if you see uh, Sense and Sensibility, so there are some films available. Uh, you see, uh, then you can go back to the past and enjoy the beauty of the past. Okay, for example, uh, I I'll show you like you, you can you can go to uh, like for example uh, you can type here for example this movie you can watch you'll be able to see. Uh, you will be able to see the world of the 1890s okay uh, you'll be able to see the world of the 1890s 1800 uh, the first part of the 19th century you'll be able to see it actually okay so dear students you please uh, watch this film uh, you can see here the old day film you have to watch to be able to see how life existed in those days right so anyway Let's wind